Tell us how you decided to start Richard Anderson Limited. <laughs> I think really it was a, a kind of mutual decision uh, in that we were, we both felt we wanted to start really a new business mm. life mm. Um, and uh, our ambition really was to have the very best uh, shop on Savile Row producing the very best work. Uh, and we wanted to uh, create a whole new environment, really. uh, environment of yeah. business yes. Um, yes. based on all those kind of traditional yeah. customers we've been used to looking after yes. and all of these new people on the block. Yeah. Yeah. We worked extraordinarily long hours, we worked at home, um, but it didn't matter. This was our child, it was our baby. Uh, and we both loved it, which we still do today. And uh, I think as a partnership, I mean, I, I had concern, you know, that because it's very difficult. Marriage is difficult. Partnerships even more difficult. And uh, we spent, you know, huge amounts of time together. But we've had the most incredible partnership because uh, I can't remember ever having had an argument. I mean, there was no way it was not going to work, was it, really? No. It, had, it had to work. It had to, absolutely. Had to and I, th I think we also um, saw that there, was, there wasn't, um, for a young a contemporary com uh, company that would still instill the um, values of the cut, make and service, we felt yeah. we could do something that was maybe less intimidating to some of the more traditional guys. I think that, that was it. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Absolutely correct. And if you look back over our the sort of different um, type of person we get in here, we're not yes. pigeon holders, really, are we? Not into, at all. Into, the, into the different types of personalities and ages we get in here. Absolutely, absolutely true. Savile Row is a mecca for bespoke tailoring. It's well known throughout the world. Customers come here for it, yes. Customers come here looking yeah. for it. And also, um, most of our customers from abroad who come here to London whether it's on business or whatever, uh, they stay in the hotels yeah, around this area. Yeah. So it's easy for them yeah. to come in and see yeah. us. And we were known on Savile Row as well, weren't we, Brian, with your, we both have sort of uh, decades of experience in Savile Row. Absolutely. We were known here, so it was the ideal to get a place here, wasn't it? It, really it was, wasn't. it was. Now to get a premises on Savile Row is extraordinarily difficult. You know, the row is very short, premises don't become available very often. So we started our company. We didn't have a shop. Richard had a cutting board erected in the garage of his home. I managed to persuade a friend of mine who was just a block away from Savile Row to let me rent a desk and a chair. And then basically um, what we did was we went out to the United States where we had lots of friends uh, who were customers uh, and they gave us fantastic support. One of our customers knocked on the door, um, we opened the door and uh, he said to us, uh, what, what are you up to you boys? And we said, well we opened our own company, uh, we're going to make the very best clothes in Savile Row, we're going to have the best tailor shop on Savile Row. He said to us, well, come on, he said, uh, and he put his arms around our shoulders. And he said, uh, I remember how tough it was when I started up my own business. He said, let's come inside and I'll give you a few, a few orders to start with. And that really was the measure of support that we had. It was really incredible. It was, uh, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. It took it us struggle. seven or eight months to achieve this, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and during that period, we'd, we'd been busy, we'd been to the States, we had an order book. Yes. And no shop to sort of uh, um, cut them and make them. No, 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 that's right. Um, and that took time to build up. Yeah. When we were talking about opening our own business, we made a short list of about half a dozen buildings that we thought we might be able to yep. get hold of. This was the one we was our real, really our favourite, um, but at the time it was occupied. The people who were here before weren't really bespoke tailors. They were in the men's clothing trade, and they had a bespoke business. Yep. But the bespoke business was not really Small. successful. No. So as we had hoped, 
the premises became available um, and we began here. We were like first time buyers, we could swoop. <laughs> we did, we did. Beautiful shop, 18 months earlier. I mean, they'd done a complete refit here. Um, so we had air conditioning, which was very, very rare on Savile Row. It was a period of minimalistic design. And so it reminded me as a, of a hospital ward. You know, it was white and uh, there were no people to be seen in the shop because the, all of the staff were hidden around this wall here and so it just looked like a corridor going down the shop. Richard and I had decided that what we wanted to do, we, we wanted not just to uh, look after uh, the characteristic customer who would come in to Savile Row to buy their clothes but also to attract young customers etc. And then it was a case of really putting our own personality on the space, wasn't it? I yes. mean, that's what we had to do. Yes. Yeah. So we moved the cutting room so they phased out, didn't we? Correct. Or we put the cutting board so they phased out down the shop. Correct. Uh, for security and also for the customers to see us, which was good. We started getting some friends involved who sort of gave us some lovely antique rugs, some artwork as well. It was a case of just going out and spending X amount of thousands on, on art to sort of dress the shop. No. It, it, was, no. it very much happened organically, I didn't think, it? Yes. And, But that's really how we how we built the shop, and today we're bursting at the seams. Uh, you see, there's clothes everywhere, but in those days, no. And that's why I said, wonderful, wonderful career. <laughs>